might sound like self-promotion for me to be talking about myself and Oakland City, Indiana. But I'm really preaching Romans chapter 9, verses 10 and 12, which says that what God does, he does without regard to any human characteristics or virtues. So God wasn't looking at any characteristics of mine or any virtues of mine when he did what he did. He, he decided on his own, you know what? I'm going to reach down, not to Me'a Sharim, Jerusalem, not to a Jewish home, not to a Yiddish-speaking home where both parents speak Yiddish and the child uh, grew up hearing Yiddish. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to reach down to Oakland City, Indiana to get my Yiddish Bible translator. Uh, and it's going to be in order that God's purpose might be clear, that, that God's workmanship might be evident, in order that that God's call might be seen, that he got his Yiddish Bible translator uh, in a place where there were no Jews. No one spoke y Yiddish. Back in the 50s, when I would sit in front of that Texaco station watching those cars go by, no, but no car ever stopped and said, hey, would any of you kids like to learn Yiddish? Uh, here's a, some Yiddish books. Uh, would you like to uh, take a look at them? Um, we're talking about the complete absence of human merit. It has nothing to do with me. It's according to God's will, friend. You have to see that. The reason I'm preaching this is there are a few people in, in Oakland City, Indiana, who are, who are possibly from Oakland City, Indiana, who are not saved, and, and, and God wants to speak to them today. Uh, Nobody said, oh, you know, Phil, you're, you're such a smart guy, and you took Latin in high school, and uh, at Oakland City High School, and uh, because of all of this uh, talent and ability, you're going to be able to do this. No, friend, it wasn't anything like that. You, you have to understand uh, that God chose an unlikely vessel from an unlikely place Deal with it, friend. Deal with it. Get, get, get really, you see, seek the Lord while he can be found. Call upon him while he's near. Uh, th th this should be a, a, a summons to you. Though they were not yet born and had done nothing, either good or bad, in order that God's purpose, uh, you know, the, the, the Bahirim, the elect, it says in the last days of a word for the elect, uh, things are going to get so bad that even they might uh, seem to be uh, on the verge of being lost. Uh, but this is how God showed His uh, purpose. He took He took them in the in the in the womb of Rebecca before they'd done anything good or bad, before there was any merit or anything about them that you could point to, and He made sure that His purpose, friend. His purpose would stand. Uh, so it's not by virtue of our works. It's, it's by virtue of His purpose. Can you say amen? amen. So there's, there's no foreseen merit. There's no foreseen worthiness on our part. Uh, it's solely based on God's own good pleasure that He does these things. Deal with it, friend. It's God's good pleasure. Not my own good inclinations, not my own wise capacities. You want to be able to see that. Some of you people who are from Oakland City, Indiana, who are watching this video, who knew me as a young person, you ought, to, you ought to be able to see that, that when you looked at me then, you didn't say, oh, there he is, a budding Yiddish Bible translator, for sure. And those of you who are Catholics, friend, the Bible says it's grace plus nothing. Grace plus nothing. Not grace plus obedience. Not grace plus human ability. Not grace plus anything. Now, of course, by grace we are brought to the point of obedience, but it's not our obedience that's, that's at, the, at, the, at the foundational level of all of this, friend. You have to understand. The reason that, that I... Uh, you know, the reason that, that uh, I translated the Bible uh, into Yiddish, uh, it's, it's not because of some, some meritorious tendency I had. 
uh, some something that I had that was leading me to be uh, to believe to be religious. Uh, no, it happened by grace alone, and by oh, and only by grace, only by grace. God gets the ultimate credit, friend. He did it all. He did it all. And some of you who think, well, you know, I'm not as bad as the next person, and yeah, it's true. I, I'm not into religion or anything, and I don't really go to any house of God, but. I think I've been a pretty good person. You're, you're depending on something that you shouldn't be depending on, friend. Because God per, God's purpose stands. It's His purpose, not, not anything in ourselves. Listen, we are God's workmanship. And, and his, his purpose stands according to what He wants. Not because of anyone's great obedience or great intention or great... Um, magnanimity or, or anything else. And you ought to be able to see that in my life. And the reason I'm giving my testimony about Oakland City, Indiana, is I want you to see God. Not me, God. This is not self-promotion. This is about God. Look, someone might say, well, Onus Chapman, he, he was the president of what is now Oakland City University. He was this man's pastor and his wife, Onus, and they were wonderful people. So maybe they were part of the encouragement to, to bring him to this point. I'm not detracting from their wonderful ministry, but I'm saying that the little reprobate that I was then, it, it, you can't give anybody any credit in order to make it perfectly plain, plain that God's purpose was being fulfilled. He didn't reach down into a Jewish home. He didn't reach down into Measherim. He didn't reach down into a Yiddish-speaking home. He reached down to Oakland City, Indiana. And we're, we're talking about the Tochnit Hashem, the, the purposeful and willed plan of God. I'm going to, I'm going to get me a, a, a Yiddish Bible translator, God said, but I'm going to get it from a very uh, unusual place. Uh, I'm going to reach down and I'm going to take the, the lowest rat at the bottom of the rat barrel and I'm going to pull him out and make him into this translator and uh, people will have to see this. So I'm not doing, in, in, indulging in self-promotion here. This is not local boy makes good. This is God makes local boy. And, 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 and it, I'm his workmanship. And if you are saved, you are saved because... You are his workmanship. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And he makes the divine summons. And he makes the call. Of God is the gift, it says. The gift of salvation. So we're talking about being born of God. Not by the agency of natural descent. Not by the will of fallen human nature. Not because of a father who wanted to get children. But because we are born of God. Hallelujah. God reached down. God in his love made a decision. The Bechirim, the Bechirim, the, the elect are God's workmanship. And there, there, there's nothing, there was nothing in my life that would have pointed toward this. In that sleepy little town, we had nothing to do but watch the cars go by. Nobody stopped in their car and said, hey kid, you look like you'd be a good Yiddish Bible translator. Come over here. I want to show you some Yiddish books and get you started on uh, the language of the Holocaust. And I would say, hollow what? We didn't even know what you were talking about. God chose a persecutor to write most of the New Testament, friend. So it'd be clear that the New Testament authorship was not Paul's authorship, but God's authorship. God was the workman. God did it. Everything happens after the counsel of God's will. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11. So we're not talking about a mechanistic system uh, or an impersonal force. We're, we're not t talking about fatalism. We're talking about a God who is there, a God who is really out there, who is at work, who must be sought and who takes no pleasure in our death, and who wants to save us, and he wants us to seek him and live. And so he uses unlikely, unfit vessels. 
And he makes them able to do certain things that they could never in a million years do without him. And God had many people in that city, Oakland City, Indiana. And uh, Onus Chapman was one of them, Pauline Chapman, uh, Iva Goble, my mother. Uh, and uh, it says in Acts chapter 18, verses 9 to 10, I have many people in the city. God had many people in the city. And, and, and of course, they all tried to make a, a, a good impression on me for my, it says, train up a child the way he should go. And when, he, when he's old, he will not depart from it. But I was a rebellious little critter. And uh, all of their efforts probably would have, would have been in vain. I mean, think about it. You've got to have full conviction, friend, that you are a sinner. That you are saved by grace and only grace. And that, that, that uh, you, you can't treat this as a joke. Some people might say, well, take that beanie off, Phil. You're, you're wasting your time going after the Jews. And they might not see what God has done at all. They might miss it completely. Uh, but I pray that you will know him and that you will be known by him and that, that he will make himself known because God wants to save you today. And, and, uh, and I thank God for Oakland City, Indiana because I had a chance to hear the gospel. I did not believe. I, I was a rebel. I tried to be an atheist in the university. I, I lived a dissolute life. I had to hit the rock. I had to hit rock bottom. I had to... I had to finally let go and let God, but only after I had, I had become a prodigal son and, and escaped the Lord all the way to uh, Beverly Hills, California. And then finally God caught up with me and he showed me that I was lost. Then he led me into school. Then he led me to the ultra Orthodox Jews. Then he led me to the study of biblical languages and uh, the Yiddish language, the the German Jewish language uh, of the Holocaust, that language that's been around for a thousand years, the language that is spoken by the uh, ultra Orthodox Jews, and then he helped me by God's grace to finish translating the entire Bible for the for them. Now, if I don't give God the glory. If I don't go back to Oakland City, Indiana and tell those people, not local boy makes good, but God makes local boy get saved. And if you're a Catholic, it's not grace plus this or grace plus that. It's grace plus nothing. You are saved by grace alone. God did it all. You, it, you are his workmanship. You cannot make yourself born again. You cannot change your life. You, you, it's impossible you might reform some of your bad habits, but only God can bring forth a new creation. You, you, you can only be born of God if God wills to have you born of God. And I'm praying for you. Would you pray this prayer with me right now? Dear God, thank you for Yeshua who died for me. Come into my heart. Forgive my sins. And I will serve you and follow you. In the name of Elohim Ha'av, Elohim Ha'ben, and Elohim Ha'ruach HaKodesh. Amen.